Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're going to be doing some Lego shopping. There are some parts that I need for some projects here in the Lego City. I keep running out of parts. It's an issue, because you need parts to continue developing these projects. Don't worry about what's going on behind me here. It's another Lego room change that I'm working on. Look at this. Imagine if uh, these were pushed up against the wall. Yeah, pretty cool. In order to do that, I'd have to get rid of that billy there, and this billy here. So it's two whole cabinets that would have to go in order for me to push these PAX units up against the wall. I'm not supposed to be talking about that stuff. That's future Brixie's problem. You know what, I actually lied to you. We are gonna make some of these changes when I get back from the brickyard. Today's <laughs> doings is going to the Edmonton Brickyard because they sell bulk Lego by the pick and build cup and I need to pick up as many cups as I can possibly fill. And also he's got a whole bunch of uh, retired sets and stuff as well. So yeah, I can't wait to go check it out. Mainly what I need is parts to fuel this project. Yeah, more projects. But I want to uh, get the train track ballast properly like this here because this is just magical. I want to do all of my ballasting like that. Yeah, that would be super cool. I pretty much have all the parts to do the straights, but not the curves. And then also I wanna do the raised train track line, but I'm officially out of the plate that I need to do that. So I need the whole whack of plate. I guarantee he's probably not gonna have enough. So I'm gonna have to order some stuff up frequently, but I figured I would support local first and start there. Now I would go to the brick bin, which is in Calgary, I've been talking to Tony recently. He's like, oh, man, it's been so long since he came down and checked out the store. It's like, I know, it's just because you're three hours away. So I got to drive there, I got to drive back, and I've got twin babies, so it's hard for me to get away for an entire day. Yeah, sorry, Tony, for right now, but yeah, look at the city. It's coming along quite nicely. Other things that we need parts for uh, is the, uh, the zoo, of course and just pretty much everything, Venetian houses, all that. But the main thing that I need parts for are the train projects because these ballast train lines, mills plates for them, and also the raised train track are just crazy how many parts they consume. And my part drawers just keep getting depleted. No! So we'll see if we can get up to any other trouble. We'll see if we have time. Uh, I don't know. They close at 7. It's already midday because I've been dealing with some other stuff. But I want to check out some other shopping locations if there's time. So without further ado, let's head on out to the Edmonton Brickyard to pick up some Lego. I actually ended up at the West Edmonton Mall Lego store because I have this Star Wars advent calendar that I have to return. I found it cheaper at Costco. So yeah, doing my first ever Lego return. I don't know if that's factual, but bye bye Lego Star Wars advent calendar. And of course, I'm having a quick browse on the pad wall while I'm here, I may as well. Made somebody's day because those advent calendars are pretty hard to get. They still have the envelopes. Ooh, and these are really nice elements here actually. I think I have enough of them though. That's what I use to build my sapling trees with those brown antennas. Oh, they still have these and some tan. Yeah, nothing much changed here though. Let's go to the brickyard. So I'm at the brickyard. But first I gotta get myself a free coffee from McDonald's. There we go, now I'm ready to uh, buy some Lego. Something new that they have here is BAM, or build a minifigure. So accessories, legs, torsos, heads, and headpieces. Oh, there's actually some good ones in here, look at that. Things that you wouldn't see on the pick and build wall, or sorry, the BAM station at the Lego store. Because these are all like just miscellaneous figures that they've acquired from collections. Like, look at that. There's even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle torsos and stuff. It's an interesting concept. I've never seen it before at a private Lego store. Well, I guess I've only been here in the brick bin, right? But yeah, it's pretty cool. We might have to build some figures. I'm also checking out their figure selection which of course is over here. So they actually have all the series, but they've been selling them individually which is cool because you don't have to buy the whole series if you just need one or two of them, then you can buy, oh, look at that one back there. 
That's cool. That guy, <laughs> that's so awesome. There's so many good ones in the CMF series. Yeah, so I have been selecting a few of these. There's all the Star Wars ones up here as well. Look at this, they have a Django. A couple Django's actually. There's Jack 14 and Admiral Thrawn as well. There he is. Oof, scarce figure. A bunch from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And then just a whole bunch of miscellaneous ones. From every theme, pretty much. Ninjago down here, some Harry Potter. There's Dumbledore. So these are the ones I'm picking up so far. Including a Wampa. Well, how convenient. Brickman Vlad came by while I was here at the Brickyard. Check it out. He brought this custom 12-story hotel that has a shopping mall on the bottom. It's got a Lego store in there, all sorts of places to eat, a lobby. Uh, there's also a clothing store, a monorail stop on the back. Apparently, it connects to his amusement park. And then 12 stories and all sorts of different hotel rooms with a suite on the top that are all fully furnished. And this is a massive mock that he has in his Lego city. It's pretty sweet. I'm glad I was here to see it. Also, check it out. There's the uh, swimming pool on the very top. There we go. Got a little Christmas cabinet going on here. Oh, I like that. Actually, never seen that before. And then we've got the gingerbread house. And check this out over here. Well, first they got all the promos up top here. Look at this. The Joker Manor. Oof. A lot of people want me to get that for the amusement park, and I've been thinking about it. Right there, pre-built. It's 500 bucks. I never realized it was so big. Like, it is just gigantic. Very tall as well. That would look good in the amusement park, wouldn't it? I just don't think I have space. That must be all the minifigures that comes with the Joker Manor. I like the white and gold ones up front here. Look at the size of SpongeBob. Whoa. I've never seen that in person. That's neat. It's right beside the Stranger Things upside down as well, which is retired. Oh, look at that. They have Series 23, and they've identified what's in the package. I need the wolf. It's here, and now I've complete my series. Behind the counter, where we got Darth Vader, the old school train station right there. Look at these, like, 3D printed things. Skeletons, blaster, huge flowers. That's hilarious. I also sort of want one of the skeletons. Over here, they have an even larger skeleton. Apparently, these are 3D printed by somebody here in Edmonton. Such a cool concept. Apparently, they just did a lightsaber. There's a blaster and also an oversized cup. I'm getting distracted though. I came here to fill pab cups, so let's get started with dark bluish gray. I managed to find four cups of dark gray. It's mainly like plate, one by, two by, four by, six by, also some brick in there. That's gonna go toward that train track stuff. Topped up some cups there with some random colors for Mills plates. They have this loyalty card here as well. They've changed it, so if you buy 10 cups, you get one cup for free. I think that's pretty neat. I sort of want to get this little mini Eiffel Tower here from the architecture line. Wow, look at this droid escape. Look at that C-3PO minifigure. It's almost like a dull tone. I've never seen that before. Oh, there's a Gladiator Hulk big fig. I remember when I was at Brickworld Chicago, I saw one of those on sale for like 25 bucks. I was like, oh, I should buy that. And then I came back 10 minutes later and it was gone. That is actually an epic set right there. Look, it's Jeff Goldblum on his chair up there. Overall, nothing crazy. I went there to get some parts and came home with this, so sort of overdid it, that's for sure. I'm really excited about the Wampa. I'm going to put that in the Winter Village Cave for the ice skating, which is something I've got to work on. i got to get that Winter Village going here, because before I blink, it's going to be December. Also got all sorts of minifigures there. That skeleton, I'm really excited about that. I just think he looks really neat and will look cool on the shelf. And then I got the Eiffel Tower here, because... That new Eiffel Tower set's coming out. I figured why not have the mini version of the Eiffel Tower, but I don't think I'll get the other large version of the Eiffel Tower, which was released in 2009. So now that we're back from the brick bin, and we got way more stuff than I originally anticipated, let's make some changes here, because I'm actually pretty excited about having these shelves pressed up against that wall. 
just making this place so much more open. And also, as I was discussing in my official reveal video, I wanted to put the Eiffel Tower there, but it's not going to fit because it's far too big. So I think if I get rid of these two cabinets here, it's going to give me more space and also give me a spot for the Eiffel Tower. I definitely sent honeydukes flying to the ground like probably two weeks ago. And I'm like, yeah, I'll repair that when I continue working on my winter village, which is going to happen here, uh, obviously, in the month of November. I will be finishing this off soon. Honestly, I have videos booked up right now for like the remainder of the month. Oh my gosh, I just have too many content ideas. It's insane. But this is definitely a top priority. I got to get Santa Claus flying. I don't know what I'm going to do with the Black Seas Barracuda from Pirates of Barracuda Bay and also Metalbeard Sea Cow because they're super tall sets, so they demand a tall shelf. So I guess for now, they're just going to go on the ground. But yeah, just like that, I've got an entire cabinet emptied here. Look what was stuck behind that cabinet. Ah, it's Ariel! For now, I've just sort of bombed stuff on the available shelves. Not really looking to do a complete rearrange of everything. I've got Steamboat Willie up there and party boats on top and Disney stuff with flowers and stuff sort of just everywhere randomly. So I won't lie to you, I'm thinking about doing another big collection reevaluation. I did one not too long ago. I gave away 30 sets to random people at a public place. It was actually at the brick bin. So I got rid of 30 sets. Uh, also, I've been selling some on the auction site, whatnot, and I've been doing some giveaways and stuff on there just to uh, just get rid of some of the smaller stuff because I'm not really one to part it out and pack it away. I just, I don't see the point in doing that. So I've been reevaluate or in the past I've reevaluated my collection once or twice and I might do it again just get rid of some of the smaller stuff that isn't really fitting into the Lego room well here and sort of is clutter the best type of clutter in my opinion but yeah I might I might consider doing that again for sure also I'm in the works of trying to get a bigger place uh, it's not a bigger house it's not a bigger property but it's somewhere off site for the Lego room. I'm trying to get this Lego room out of my basement. More on that in a different video because I'm <laughs> so far away from even doing that. I'm just having discussions right now with people that can help make that happen. Actually, you know what? More on that, whatever. So I know I could rent a place and I could do that right now, but I'm just not one for renting. So. I'm trying to get financing on buying some sort of warehouse. I don't know though. I've never done any sort of corporate lending. I've, I, of course, I have a mortgage on this house and I have a mortgage on my rental, but I don't know anything about corporate lending and buying commercial properties. And if I can buy a commercial property or if Brixie or me, Jordan, has the capacity of doing that. So I am talking to the people that can point me in the right direction on how to do that. So I am asking questions about how that works. Pretty exciting. Once again, more on that later. Okay, both bill units are now emptied and I also moved both packs wardrobe units. I should have took a before and after photo. It just feels so much more spacious in here. Look at that. Like, look at this angle. You can see the Lego City, and you can see a little bit of these shelves. That's pretty cool. It still feels a bit tight because these shelves are here. Obviously, I don't think I can carry those up the stairs on my own. Like, I can carry the weight of them. It's just a little bit of an awkward carry, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and then the Eiffel Tower would go right here, and the Eiffel Tower has a 22 and a half inch base. It would come to there, and it's square. So it'd sort of boop, go right there. Now, I could move these cabinets over a little bit more because I could pull it forward, and it could go against this baseboard because this door doesn't really need any clearance. So I could do that if I needed the extra two inches because... 
the Eiffel Tower will come out to here. I think I'll play that by ear just because I don't know what that's going to look like. I guess I'll wait until I have the Eiffel Tower built to see how it fits in that spot before I move those cabinets over because I would rather have whatever you want to call this, the door framing or whatever you want to call that, visible. I just think it looks better. Even when you approach that space from this side of the Lego room, look how much more open it looks. That looks substantially better. And you know what? You never really saw this Billy unit and you never really saw this Billy unit here either. So I think if I work to reduce my collection slightly, just get rid of some of the smaller sets, or just look to reorganize some of the sets in the space that I have, this is definitely a good change, especially when you see the awesome Eiffel Tower right there. And it's like, boom, Eiffel Tower City. Yes, very cool. Yeah. You know what? I was also contemplating making a platform for the Eiffel Tower and putting it in the corner over there and having it on a platform so the trains can go underneath it. But literally, if I put the Eiffel Tower on the uh, Lego City tables, it literally is like one or two inch clearance to the ceiling. So I can't even raise it up so the trains can go underneath. That'd be the only way I'd want to put it in the Lego City is if I could raise it up. Doesn't really make sense. But yeah, everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. I hope you enjoyed this Lego room vlog and also Lego shopping vlog as we got some cool stuff there for the Lego room and for the projects here. Gonna have to continue cleaning up and move these cabinets in the near future, but I'm definitely digging these changes. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Farewell.